They are adding functionality to Windows Update to provide firmware updates. So it's basically Windows Update with added functionality for firmware. And the reason why they do this is because companies suddenly realize that patching the machine includes this patching, patching is the firmware. simply automation around MBT. Yeah. For every sequence that you select, it's going to install a virtual machine or create a virtual machine, install the sequence on that machine, run yeah. sysprep, and automatically capture that to a WIM file and save it up on the file share. So basically, you run a PowerShell script, you walk away. If you picked five sequences here in this list, you get five okay. images on the server. Okay. Is driver group zero zero one, and the value is the folded structure. So my folder structure began with Windows 10, 64. And then I'm going to replace it with percent model percent. Because during um, deployment, MDT learns about what your model is. As lo long as your folder name here is matching whatever model you're deploying to, there will be a match and those drivers. See, we are, are gathering a lot of different information for different vendors in different ways because they, they need to be called in different ways. But they all spit back variables that I can use in my sequences. So if I was using this sequence or this uh, script with MDT, I would uh, not use the model variable. I would instead go ahead and use model alias. If I have a script Any that script sets that have variable. An MDT, does have the ability to take command lines. So if you want to specify the task sequence ID you're going to run, you just do slash task sequence ID colon and the ID. That is the equivalent of saying task sequence ID equals in the uh, custom settings.ini. So do you really need to have a custom settings.ini? No, you don't. You can override so everything. Using the user state migration tool that will use backup templates to back up only what you have to find, put on the hard drive, then it's going to boot into WinPE. Wipe the disk, not format, wipe, except for the backup folder. And then it's going to apply the new image. It's going to install drivers, applications. And the very end of that sequence, you will find it's going to restore the backup. So again, from the end user, it appears to be an upgrade. But from a setup point, we collect the logs files uh, locally, of course. And once we're done with the sequence, we need to. Well, we need to flip a couple of things. And once we have that, we do um, a bits upload. Um, th there's a couple of things that you need to, to uh, make sure. And that is that deployment share is one share and the log share is another share. The log share can never be inside. It's gonna copy everything that we have in the source route, which is the security baselines, right? It's gonna copy that to the C, C drive when we build the virtual machine, it will automatically check if that folder exists. If it does exist, it's going to take the same security baselines that you have applied to your physical privilege access workstation. It's now going to be applied to the virtual machine as well. So they will be yeah, equal. I have also secure. written for one of the customers that, that we worked with. Um, I think I put it here. The download script to synchronize everything? Yeah, it's, it's a pre-caching script that basically pre-downloads the deployment share to a device that I want to have as a cache server mm -hmm. in the environment. And it runs for maybe 20, 25 minutes. But then I have all the a little bit of a well. progress bar here at the bottom. It allows you to flip on debug mode and to wipe disks and show disks and start PowerShell and launch start and exit out. I also set a static IP address if needed uh, on a machine. 
so this is a little bit of improvement of, of the current version that is out there. But you see here, I'm connecting to an HTTPS server. So it's no longer a whack whack something. Uh, it server actually tries to care of the registration. Server. So here is the script that takes care of the registration. It takes the hardware hash. It connects through Intune using an app registration for security, connects to it, and adds the device into autopilot, wait and loops until it's been imported. One, two, five, seven minutes, whatever that may be. Then it verifies that the synchronization kicks in, and we'll loop and wait there until that issues is done. If you transferred a physical device to another customer and the other customer wanted to add that device to his or her uh, autopilot database, uh, it couldn't because it was owned by you. You need you, to you understand have to that. In, <laughs> yeah, you have to create a support request yeah. and send in proof that, no, I, I actually bought this device. It's mine now. And Correct. then actually support in the back end, queen and delete it from the wrong tenant. And you we'll can add it to that. Tenant. It's simply a Windows and a 10 file that is deploy machines into work group. And I'm automating most of the stuff. And when it logs in the first time, I have an automated login. It actually runs the script that gets the hardware hash. And this is a, from PowerShell Gallery. This is a Microsoft script. And it outputs the hash into a CC file on the desktop. So that's what the unattend uh, XML does. List the volumes, assign the C drive. And I can try to copy something to the C drive. Typically, if you're able to do this, you know that the storage driver that you have in WinPE is, uh, is okay. And of course, the Verify network, you can just download a file of the network. Once you have a connection, MDT always mapped the Z drive up to the server. You can try to copy something there down Each. to the client sequence that you have has an ID. That ID corresponds to a folder in the control folder. So my 21H2 sequence is number 11. This is my uh, unattend file for this sequence. And this is the sequence itself. Also an XML or I moved pulse after, enable it again. And now we have a sequence that does this and then pauses. If I go back to my client and pick that sequence, it's now going to try to install that old reader and then open up a PowerShell prompt for troubleshooting. 